Hello and welcome to North 100, a Canadian Highlander podcast. I'm Serge. Joining me, I have a Jer. Hello. An Alex. Halloween. And a Ben. But doctor, I am Wheeler. Reminder that North 100 is brought to you by you with your support over at the Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run. Let's start off with the same way we start every episode with the best card that you're not playing. Up to date, Alex, what is your secret tech? So I used to call this the best $2 mythic I ever bought. Ooh. Um, and then they reprinted it at rare. Yeah. <laughs> Weird, right? I'm um, talking about uh, Obsidat Ghost Council. Ooh. So one white, white, black, black gets you a legendary spirit advisor, which is a 5 5. Not bad. And when it enters the battlefield, target opponent loses two life and you gain two life. And then here's the interesting part. At the beginning of your end step, you may exile Obsidat. If you do, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of your next upkeep. It gains haste. So this is a creature that is completely immune to all forms of sorcery speed removal. Yeah. Including wrath. Because Except it's... route. <laughs> okay, well, but that's <laughs> instant. It's a sorcery. Yeah, but it's not at sorcery speed. But it's a sorcery. Uh, Jared's getting, uh, sorcery. Sorcery. Jared getting him with the it's um, a actually. It's sorcery and a wrath. Okay, well, uh, if you <laughs> if you kissed... Uh, what... Speed is the key. Yeah, right. okay. But, okay, so this card, I mean, it, it will claw you back into a game. It's got a big... It's got a big body, it mm. cracks in for lethal. A big and front and a big back. And it's Ooh. really difficult to deal with. Like some decks that rely a lot on like sorcery speed removal and maybe don't have anything instant that can kill a 5-5 five five, um, are really going to struggle with this one because it disappears every turn and is just completely not there for them to do anything about. And Even it comes if you're... Back and, vroom, yeah. and, yeah, and you can cheat it right into play with Gorios Vengeance. You can't Holy really moly. burn this out because it's the ultimate feel bad. Because if you're against a deck that has a bunch of damage-based removal, mm -hmm. and then the, and they're like, oh, it's an Obsdat. Well, I'm already getting drained, which means they're going up in life. Yeah. And then I have to use multiple burn spells to kill this. And that's only if you have multiple instant speed burn spells. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just... Or I guess can't. against a red deck, you might leave this around. To can't block, even but... Doom Blade this. Uh, slow. <laughs> it's easy, yeah. Um, chump blocking it feels kind of bad too, because you're still getting the damage in with the drain. I don't know. We haven't seen this in a while, which it definitely feels like a good candidate for the best card you're not playing. Yeah, like, but when I have played against it, it's been a house. I, it's most of the games when I did play it, I won those games. It's just like it it attacks indirectly. It's hard to get rid of. It just like it's a pain for your opponent. Mm -hmm. Downside, difficult to cast. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, if you're just in, like, this is going to be sweet in two color decks, obviously. Um, what were you, you playing this in? I'm trying to remember now. I th it was probably just like Orzhov Midrange or something like that. You've definitely, Orzhov I'm fairly control. certain you've played this in the Soul Sisters deck. Yeah, that well. too, because it gains life Yeah, and enters play. And kills them. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, all all things you want your cards to do. Yeah. Give me old murders. Oh, multiple but ATBs yeah. on that Soul Sister, not even including the train? Oh, yeah. maybe. Mm -hmm. Jerry, you don't have, like, a black version of your Blink deck, do you? Uh, no. You want to try mm. Esper Blink? Mm -mm. Featuring I've, Obsidati? I've considered it. You could do yeah, it. This was probably a high on that list. It's like, uh, Blinky, 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 you're dead! Uh -huh. you'd, you'd add black instead of yeah. cut green. I think he'd be four color. The mana dorks are just really This is really good. awkward in four color though. Like black, black on your splash color. Black, yeah. gives, black gives you Yerok though. Yeah, you're playing green. Mana's free. <laughs> yeah, four color decks you are going to have a. I bet, I guarantee four color decks are going to have an easier time casting this than an Orzhov. Deck. One of my oh, yeah. favorite fallacies in this format is four color makes your mana better than two or three color. Mm -hmm. Well, they, the two Pardon? color decks get like Port Town <laughs> as their new duels. So I'm like, yeah. just Eldritch Evolution. It's, especially into this if you're enemy color, try playing an enemy color two color deck. Yeah. Like, and your opponent yeah. or, laughs or in Zod. Blood you Moon. Have like, you have like half the dual lands that allied. Colors Boros do. will literally play City of Brass. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, Boros will play Tarnished Citadel. No, they won't. That's a lie. I've done it. <laughs> That's <laughs> disgusting. All right. Let's move on to today's theme. Today, we want to talk about hybrid combo. That's right. We're back with Let's Talk About X. And with every topic, uh, we need to start with a definition. So let's throw it to Jer. Jer, what is hybrid combo? 
Well, hybrid combo is sort of a, a melding. When you meld combo with another already existing archetype, typically <clears throat> mid range or combo, but sometimes ramp or aggro, it's just less less commonly. Um, and it's when the deck sort of has two game plans and has the ability to pivot between those game plans based on a couple of factors, their draw, uh, what matchup they're in, uh, and yeah, mo- mostly those two factors. Mm. Now, we often talk about <clears throat> not diluting your win con. So I'm a blue-white tempo deck. That means I should just jam like Painter Servant Grindstone because then if I get one half, I can just find the other half and win on the spot. No, and that's not really what we're talking about. And also, when we talk about hybrid combo, we talk about a deck that has combo as, like Ben Ben mentioned this earlier, built into the skeleton of the deck. It's not just like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll cut Mana Leak and Condemn and put Painter Servant Grindstone in <laughs> um. deck. Now I'm hybrid combo, right? Uh, no, not not really. We're talking about decks like Sandy B, Pod, Pivot. Pivot's probably the most important word when you can when the pieces that you are going to play out early aren't necessarily going to alert your opponent that you're going to combo kill them. So, if I'm on a like a creature a hybrid combo deck that has creature like a creature based theme, and I go like mana dork they're like okay and you're like another mana dork and they're like all okay. right i guess i'll tap out because i'm safe and then you're like untap carrion feeder academy rector <laughs> like <laughs> it's, it yeah. being able to just be like oh okay well now i can do this instead of being like uh okay loxodon yeah, you slider. activated my trap card well, you not- fool and, and it's not even they'll tap out because they're safe. Eventually, they'll have to tap out because you're like, attack you with Eternal Witness <laughs> yeah. and Cartel Aristocrat and two mana dorks. And you're like, okay, I'll take seven. That's seven? The beatdown <laughs> plan is real. Mm-hmm. That's the a very important key is that like you're not necessarily gearing up to always kill them with the combo kill hmm. because eventually these little dumb creatures that are just like, Pounding at their shins repeatedly are going to adds up. kill them. And I've pour, definitely put killed somebody with a trinket mage they, before. Oh yeah. Well, and it and it goes the other way as well. Is once people are in the know, once they've been comboed, they start treating mm-hmm. you like a combo deck, and then they just wait too long to play to play the on the fair axis, and you just get <clears> so <throat> far ahead on the fair axis, you end up getting to choose which avenue you beat them with, and they can't really do anything about it. The Battle of Helm's Deep. There's a whole bunch of orcs just being like, Ugh, sword, sword, sword. And then there's a one guy with the torch, and he's like, I'm going to light this bomb. And they're like, don't light the bomb. And it's like, I'm going to light it. And it's like, shoot him. And it's like, I can't. Oh, I blew up the wall. That's hybrid combo. All right, you heard it here. <laughs> so yes. when, and, and I, I think this is the part we need to really try and nail, what sort of double duty do things have to go? before, you know, how am I not accidentally making my deck worse? When do you know that you're hybrid combo when you're not just supposed to be either a f- an all-in combo deck or just a mid-range deck? Because there's, there's an important line there. The decks that work, work. And I've definitely, I've definitely in, you know, six years ago when I was playing this format, it's like, all right, I'm a blue-white deck, I've already got Stoneforge Mystic in that, so I can get my Batter Skull, Hmm. but I'm blue-white, so that means I can go get Sword of the Meek (laughs) and just play Thopter Sword combo, because it's so easy. I already have this, and depending on the matchup, I can tutor for one piece or the other piece, and I'm playing Enlightened Tutor, so you have these pieces in your deck, you're like, oh, now that I have Sword of the Meek and Thopter Foundry, may as well run Academy, and you see this weird snowball where you add one thing to your deck and you're like, well, that means I can add that. That means I add that. And you're like, what is your deck? Blue White Combo Sword Academy. I lost. For the record, I love the process. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the outcome. Uh, I, I feel like you have to kind of, if if you look at these decks, like again, Kiki Pod is such a good example because it's probably one of the most terrifying mid-range games to Ooh. grind out its opponents. And then also its I win combo is easily found, easily assembled, and easily understood. Well, and it's also, this and this and you're dead. Yeah, and then the, the, the separate moving parts of that deck are also like pretty good anyways. It's like, oh, I just have a Kiki Jiki and pff, I don't know. Right. 
you could anything <laughs> but the problem is if you took out the combo parts of kiki and just made like a four color no black birthing pod value deck yeah you can get away with it you could probably win some tournaments even but you won't have that extra spice that gets those wins in matches that you that like a four color just pure mid-range value deck would have no business winning yes yeah, mm. it's, it's the difference between myself cooking a meal and emerald cooking a meal <laughs> you, you gotta kick it up another notch you know? <laughs> wow that was a reference that you just made i like i like that it's like ah but adding the combo makes your deck better <laughs> yeah it's, it's like if you can find that sweet spot of justifying this isn't just for the hybrid combo decks too it's sure. for a lot of combo decks in general where if you can find the sweet spot of your pieces having multiple interactions so like that spider web of like kind of like a garbage platter but instead of playing eight drops and like ramp spells that cause you to exile half your library and uh, pay your opponent five dollars they like <laughs> You're just including like a value creature, right? Yeah. Like, I love, you're I love including... card so bad. You're like, I play this and here's a five. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, do you take card? Like it, <clears throat> it's it's just you like Venmo. <laughs> you you look at something like Kiki Jiki and you're like, Well, this is a five mana two two that's a legend that has triple red pips in here. And and has haste. It but has like, haste. Yeah, oh yeah, it's got haste. But then like and you're like, okay, would I really play this in this four color like mid-range deck? No, but the fact that I have access to it means maybe I'll get a Palace Jailer every turn. Maybe I'll oh. get to Rex Sage or Knight of Autumn something repeatedly. Maybe you'll have a Glenelendra in play and your control opponent will never resolve another spell again. That's you, exactly, so you have these tools that like this card that- Not legendary. Not player. the best sort of thing, right? Is it the opportunity cost? Glen so Glenelandra is not not legendary. Yeah, you're thinking of Vendillion Cleek. I am thinking of Vendillion Cleek. Classic. Blunder. I tried to correct Jer and I was wrong. Wow. I apologize. Oh, yeah, that's, so, that's awkward. So let's talk about opportunity cost then. So in the blue white example, uh, Painter Servant and Grindstone are really bad by themselves. Like, well, how does... They do it, nothing. You're like, I'm a no, blue-white... No, white hold on, hold on. You can grindstone away your brainstorms, your jaces, your and, sensei's talks. And if you have a painter servant your play... Your vampiric tutors. <laughs> if you have a painter servant play, all your Force of Will cards are online now. You could pitch a land to Force of Will you if you name blue. You can for palace jailers. Ooh. Like, <laughs> I, no, and, you know, we found the lines... In days of in days gone past, but is that is that something you want to look at? Wait, Does do you can these natural order for Grizzlebrand, Bill Baby? Do these combo <laughs> pieces need to already fit in your shell instead of being two on the outside? We we know these we know these lines and these situations because we've been dumb enough to try these <laughs> decks and have been like, no no no, it's fine because uh, I'm yeah. not cutting it because I could do this. And I've definitely won with uh, Painter Servant with uh, with a uh, humility in play, and I learned how layers work in that particular case. Yeah, oh baby, one. it's a one with no ever, abilities, and you're still dead. Have you ever cast an Ugin with a Painter Servant in play? Oh, it feels so good. All right, oh, can we talk yeah. about that interaction really quickly? So we've talked about Painter Servant a lot. What's Painter Servant? Uh, it's a two mana one three, uh, artifact creature Scarecrow. Mm. Uh, as it comes into play, choose a color. All cards that aren't in play, spells, and permanents are the chosen color in addition to their other colors. Seems good. And what so about Ugin? Ugin the Spirit Dragon is an eight mana colorless planeswalker. <laughs> enters with seven loyalty. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, has a has seven a plus six. plus two. Uh, yeah, seven enters with seven. You nailed it. it. Yeah. Uh, plus two uh, to Ghost Fire. Uh, <clears throat> deals three damage to target creature or player. Minus X, exile each permanent with converted mana cost X or less. That's one or more colors. What? Hmm, interesting. Doesn't say <laughs> non-land. Nope. Just has a colored clause. Let's go back to Painter Servant for a second. <laughs> All permanents are the chosen color, including lands. How convenient. Yeah, that's one so, of my favorite interactions in a prison deck. So then you can minus zero your Ugin to blow up all the lands. And chances are you have some number of artifacts that generate mana in place. So you also have like, an Ugin. <laughs> Yeah, that too. <laughs> yes. And you're ah, one you three, found the, you you're found one, the part of the combo. Alex. Your one three can block. <laughs> uh, I get, I mean, as an aggro player, I actually hate that body. Yeah, one three is so annoying. But let's not making painter servant sound like it has a lot of value it's outside not. of these niche corners. 
<laughs> it, like, these cards are not good. No. And that's why including them in your control deck is probably not going to be uh, worth it unless you have some other utility, uh, other way of finding them, um, and that way of finding them is included because you have Time Vault in your deck. Sure. Like, the only reason I would find myself including a Painter Servant Grindstone in a control deck is because while it's not great and very vulnerable, if, say, I had a Time Vault combo or a Flash Hulk combo, things that are guaranteed to kill my opponent uh, and not composed of and, one And much better at killing two. your opponent. Let's, let's establish yeah. that. Um, then there's a lot of overlapping tutor pieces and giving a backup plan is kind of a neat little Pardon perfectly me. normal noise for a human to make. <laughs> um, but like uh, the games, when you're playing something like a better combo deck like Time Vault or whatnot, like just slapping that shell into control, the urgency to deal with it is so much higher because your combo is absurdly powerful hmm. and not my combo will die to lightning bolt or unsummon. Fatal push. <laughs> like, or my anything. opponent accidentally having uh, an Eldrazi in their deck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like, Painter, Servant, Grindstone, kill you. Oh, I just put Kozilek in the deck. Just, I had some extra mana and... <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, now that we've got a pretty good idea of what hybrid combo is, let's look at some specific lists that we've named, uh, talk about how that list works and why they're so successful. So Sandy B, mm. always a bridesmaid, never a bride, no longer true, uh, but a- yeah, Well, I mean, it hasn't been true for like six years Yeah, but we kept, now, we kept but the name around. It's still fun. keep it. Yeah, yeah and uh, just a, a, a deck that will always have a place in the hearts of everybody on this podcast, mm. certainly. Uh, let's start with Wheeler. Wheeler, what can you give a definition for what Sandra Bullock is sure. in in our format? Okay. Well, she's an actress. Yeah, but, very good. Hey, she's an Academy Award winning actress. Get it right. Have some respect. Yep. Okay. Uh, anyways, <laughs> after that uh, rudeness, um, Sandy B, is also known as Pattern Rector, uh, is an Abzan creature combo hybrid deck that looks to uh, get a Protean Hulk dead to then s assemble a combo of a sack outlet. So what, what's a Protein Hulk first? Why are we trying to kill Hulk? it? Oh boy. It's what you need uh, when you need Strap games. in folks. So Protein Hulk is uh, meat and eggs. <laughs> we eat. It's a seven mana, five green green for six six creature beast. Uh, when Protein Hulk dies, you search your library for any number of creature cards with total converted mana cost six or less, and you put them onto the battlefield. I'm not going to cover every single line because the strength of this deck is that if you rip off one piece of your combo, two more grow back. <laughs> ah, yes, the Hydra of hybrid yeah, combo. Yeah, <laughs> but effectively, you're going to want to get this into play with a sack outlet and then have this die and then assemble any number of ways of gaining infinite life, uh, machine gunning your opponent to death with damage, um exiling their entire hand permanence and library. There's a bunch of ways that you can do it. Now, you called the deck Pattern Rector, and yes. yet we found Protein Hulk. Well, how are we going Protein to get out Hulk. this seven mana 6-6? Six, six? Mm. I'm glad you asked, Ben. Uh, we are going to <laughs> use an enchantment called Pattern of Rebirth, uh, which is a three and a green for an enchant creature aura. Um, that says whenever enchanted creature dies, its controller may search their library for a creature card, put it onto the battlefield, and then shuffle their library. So, but you, how are you going to get this enchantment into play, Ben? <laughs> I'm glad you asked, Ben. Wait what then you do? So, how are we going to get this enchantment into play? Well, we could just play it on a thing yeah. that happens quite often. But there's a card called Academy Rector. Uh, which I'm is glad you asked. Rector, ben. damn near killed her. Which is three and a white. <laughs> For a one-two, uh, and you will kill this old woman. Wow! Uh, repeatedly. Well, once. In uh, yeah. Game, you know, ideally. she's she's old and frail. Maybe she has an accident. You nope. know what I mean? Nope. So it's three and a white for a one-two. When Academy Rector is put into the graveyard, you may remove Academy Rector from the game. This is important. It goes to the graveyard. There's a triggered ability. If you're against it, scoos the Rector. Um, if you do exile Rector, you can search your library for any enchantment and put it into play. 
So this there, is Urza's block. But there's <laughs> an there's an interesting Whee! theme. Everything says when it's put into your graveyard. Mm -hmm. All three cards you have says when this is put into your graveyard, do a thing. Yes. I just think that's interesting. How? <laughs> oh, it's great. This is the strength, and this is why like this deck and other all these hybrid combo decks are going to function. You're going to find recurring themes across the pieces, mm -hmm. right? Um, while these cards aren't the best as far as like a mid-range creature disruption beatdown plan goes, although there's nothing sweeter than attacking your opponent with Protean Hulk a couple of times to kill him. I thought you were going to say Academy Rector for, oh, for well, I mean you're that like, too. block and kill it, Nobody you coward. Nobody wants to block Never. This. Nobody blocks the Academy Rector. Um, but to get this, to get these cards out, <clears throat> right, you need to play other cards that work with them. You need creatures to find that kill your opponent, that loop that have some value. And so one of the ways to do that is play cards like Siege Rhino. I like to talk about Siege Rhino as one of the uh, best pieces for looping a kill because it's not the immediate one that comes to mind, No, but it's the best fair one there is. So Siege Rhino is one white, black, green for a four, five Rhino with Trample that when it ETBs, each opponent loses three and you gain three. And so through one of the many loops, because there's a certain amount of cards in the uh, Protean Hulk loop that are kind of stock. You're going to need these pieces to get this engine going. How you kill them doesn't matter. So you can just use anything that alters their life total, their cards in their library, whatever it may be. And Siege Rhino is one of those cards. Sure. And so you just drain them infinitely. But if you cast a Siege Rhino on, I don't know, turn three, that's also quite Feels good. good. Feels good. Feels good. Because they got to deal with this Rhino. It's an interesting use of the word fair in this case. <laughs> yeah. I mean... The, I mean, Siege Rhino, the lord of mid-range, you know, dominated an entire standard block. A lot <gasps> of people have nightmares about it. It's <gasps> classic blah, card right there. But being used in a, in a very different game plan right here. I mean, I thought my favorite mode was just a recurring Nightmare Siege Rhino over and over, but the side there. So an interesting thing about uh, Pattern Rector and Sandy B. This was probably one of the decks I had the hardest time actually understanding how it worked hmm. the first time. You played against it a lot. It has all that redundancy. When you're sitting across from it and you're new to the format, it feels really unfair. Because you're like, but I have a scavenging ooze up, and I took out like two or three of the different pieces. How do I actually disrupt this? How do I beat it? And I actually had to Google it. Why is it called Pattern Rector? What are these pieces? What Wait, are the you had to Google how to beat. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I didn't know I didn't know where the deck came from in the history of this. Used to be a standard deck with uh, Academy Rector, Nantuko Husk, and Pattern of Rebirth. Maybe it was an old extended deck or something like that. There was an old extended deck, but it... And it and, went and, and got it, it went and got off of Pattern of Rebirth, like, Deranged Hermit. Well, you can get Verdant Force. That's pretty good. No, it's not, not Verdant Force. You killed you, them because you had Nantuko Husk. You sacked it. Oh, I think you had you Parallax the, Wave as well, like the original version. Okay. And then, you, and then you sacked everything to your Nantuko Husk. Sir, plus two plus two. I'm impressed. This is a very deep cut. This I is do, like... I spent a lot of time researching this. This is like, like eight years ago. 2005, yeah. 2003 extent, like pre Tinker extended. Yeah, or post and this was Tinker this extended. was pretty close to like a turn three or turn four kill back in the days when that was pretty rare. Hmm. And you'd make your Nantuko husk enormous, and you'd swing for lethal, and that's sort of where this deck got its roots in the in the in the origins. And you're like, where where are the pieces? Why is this so important? It, and to not understand the loop of the sack outlet. Sack your Academy Rector, put Pattern of Rebirth on a different creature, sacrifice that creature. So you need quite a bit of setup. But then once the wheels start moving, how do you and what our deck and our format did to this deck after it, that? It's one of those decks where it feels kind of bad because when you'll cap when you'll kill someone with it and it's their first time doing it, they're like, okay, walk me through the combo. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> okay. And then you explain one of them and they're like, Okay, so this does this, and this is this. Okay, got it. And you're like, great. And then the next game, you'll set it up, and they're like, ha ha, I gotcha. And you're like, okay, well, I'll get this piece instead. Like, what? <laughs> they're like, all right, I'll do this in response. They're like, no, you walked me through it. That's cheating. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but you told me how the combo worked. Yeah. Well, like, I told you one line of the combo. Or, or you just like, <laughs> just beat them to death with like a Dimir House Guard or a Viral. <laughs> That's gotta and, feel bad. And you're just like. I, they're like, what? you didn't combo. It's like, I don't know what to tell you. You couldn't beat a 2-3 fear that could regenerate. <laughs> 
My karmic guy <laughs> brought back a Lanoir elf and killed you for two in the sky over oh, ten yeah. turns. Wow, yeah, sorry. Demi can we talk about Demir Houseguard for a second? <laughs> can we? Yes. This is I a, love this card. This is a weird card. It's not quite like best card you're not playing tier, but it's kind of well, essential in the sort of deck. So <laughs> a three be. and a black gets you a skeleton. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Spooky, scary skeleton. A two, three with fear. Um, you can sacrifice a creature to regenerate it, and it has transmute, which means you pitch the card, pay a cost, which is one black, black, uh, and search for a card of uh, equal converted mana cost. So why is this good? Well, it finds Academy Rector. It finds uh, pattern, of rebirth. pattern of Rebirth. Birthing it is pot. also oh, not a in sacrifice yeah. outlet mm -hmm. into it, unto itself. Mm -hmm. So it does everything the deck wants. It also just has fear, so you're like, your bottom worst case scenario is you attack with a creature <laughs> two, with fear. Two really <laughs> quick things about this card, too, yeah. is that not only is it a sack outlet, but it's a sack outlet that much like Cartel Aristocrat can protect itself. Yeah. Because your sack outlets are going to be some of the most vulnerable cards to target, and it feels bad to keep them in your hand because, I mean, I like attacking for two in this deck, um, but being able to just, like, a bird opponent's like, I can't, I don't understand. <laughs> I can't kill it. This is the first time I've seen this art this close up, and I noticed his homies in the background are like, well, how come he gets two? <laughs> <laughs> Why is he so important? Like, he gets I, two Well, weapons. I got an axe. That counts but as two. To, right? to seal the mid-range quality too, right? Look at this card. It's not great. It, do, it does Classic good work. Classic mid-range right does here. does good work. But importantly, <laughs> if you are not in a spot in which to kill them, through combo, find a Palace Jailer. Siege find Rhino. a Siege Rhino. Find an Obstinate Baloth. Yeah. Find, oh my God. Uh, Baloth. like... Restoration a, Angel. Exactly. There's just Yow. like a million things that you can find. Or Birthing Pod, if you're on a Birthing Pod <laughs> build of it, right? Like or you can get a Planeswalker. Yeah. There's a million things that you can do and find with this card that lets you pivot to like, oh, well... Palace Jailer is how I win this game. I'm mm -hmm. going to resolve this Jailer. I'm going to draw a million cards with the Monarch. And because I have all these wonky reanimation cards, if they kill my Palace Jailer, I'm going to get my Palace Jailer back. It's pretty gross. Cards, very good. So any any final thoughts on Sandy B before we start talking about another hybrid combo? It's it, it's certainly the uh, one of the least impressive mid-range plans when things don't go well. Yeah. Because you're... Combo cards or your setup cards are a little more all in. Yeah, your your, your karmic guide and your revel arcs can be a little well, bit just, clunky on just curve. Just the sack outlets, especially because you need to have one in play, and they're pretty pretty. Well, they're one ones the, for one that, that do a thing. Yeah, the hands where you just like have mana dorks, uh, a sack outlet, and like a diabolic intent or a duress or whatever, and you're just like against a blue deck that can answer the one relevant Sweat. card, or like against blue moon, and you're just like, oh no, <laughs> my, my, these cards are not good. They're not making the cut. All right, well, let's talk about another hybrid combo deck that we talk about a lot, not only on the podcast, but in the format in general. Hoof. There it is. Come on, come on and come slam. On, walk a shaka, and welcome walk a shaka, to the shaka, Jair. Shaka. Uh, I'm going to throw to Jer. Jer, tell me about Hoof. Uh, Hoof is a hybrid mid-range ramp combo deck that uses mostly creatures, uh, uses Gaia's Cradle mana, uses uh, mana dorks that tap for many, many manas, mm -hmm. such as Raphelos, Priest of Titania, Elver Charge Druid. So it's a ramp deck. Sort of. I mean... I heard it, it described as a hyper mana strategy by yes. this guy, I think. It is a hyper mana strategy. Uh, that and the, the academy decks are the other hyper mana strategies. Because there's ramp and then there's like... <laughs> Choo-choo! <Why? Yeah. laughs> like, well, there, there's ramp where you're like, I'll cast a 10 drop on turn 6, and then there's ramp where I want 20 mana on turn 3. I've designed my deck to specifically hit this mana at this threshold and cast one of these cards, which then does this. Yeah. Like, hmm. it's hyper mana is like big brain, like... <laughs> <laughs> you've got, yeah, you've got everything planned out. Academy it's, is just like, all right, here's the mere battle sphere. You get them. <laughs> Vroom. Yeah, and it... Hoof looks to utilize cards like Natural Order to cheat on mana if it's getting disrupted or if it has four mana on turn two. What's uh, uh, Natural Order do? 
Uh, it's two green green for a sorcery. As additional cost to cast it, sacrifice a green creature. Then you may search your library for any green creature and put it into play. It seems good. Yeah. And well, it the, gets better. The typical targets are Primeval Titan, which can then find Dark Depths Thespian Stage to yep. soon 2020 your opponent. Or Crater Hoof Behemoth. Which two. the deck is named after. Yeah. Now, what is Hoof? Because that's what the deck is named five after. Five green, green, green for a 5-5 five, five haste. It is a beast. When it enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain trample and get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creatures you control. And people are like, isn't it hard to kill with this card? No, you need like three creatures and then they're dead. Yep. Well, just this and a Kiki Jiki, it does at least 18 <laughs> damage. <laughs> Holy moly. We know it does more. Just don't worry about it. Well, it's like you're exploiting the little critters that you played out to get this much mana to crash in with them. Yeah. Funny you say exploit, Alex. Uh-oh. Or is, no, no, that's, that's not exploit. the one. What? It's a... Uh, Emerge? Yeah, that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, nice the try. Funny, nice you <laughs> <laughs> Funny you... S- I mean, this Good is Good question, Ben. Yeah. 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 Thanks for asking, Ben. Uh, it also plays functional other hoofs, such as Decimator of the Provinces, uh, which... Pig, pig. Importantly, yeah, Spaghetti Pig. Spaghetti Pig! Which conveniently Why are you has... Why my spaghetti? Which conveniently has a cast trigger, so if you're playing against a blue deck, sometimes you'll, if you're very far ahead on board or you hit, just have many, many creatures, you'll actually choose to tutor up this one instead if you have the option to, because... Uh, it doesn't matter if they counter it or not. Uh, your creatures are still getting plus two, plus two, and trample. Uh, and that's often enough to get the blue decks dead. This this card also, um, I think, a, a relatively, uh, not relatively new, because this part of it has been a while, around for a while, but just like as a whole, I find like hybrid combo decks tend to have like a certain piece, usually it's a tutor, that if they get to resolve that, it might take some time, but that single card will then get them to a point where they win the game. Hmm. Where for Hoof, if you play Fierce Empath, which is two and a green, uh, one one elf, when it ETBs, you search your library for any creature with six or more CMC. Um, this is kind of the classic, like Empath into casting Hoof, not impossible, but not the easiest. Um, but empath into find the decimator and then using the empath to emerge the decimator is uh, <laughs> chef's kiss. Like that's kind of the equivalent of like, oh well, I got this. Here we go. It's immediately a pig. Are any other pigs? We've named two pigs. There's another pig. What's there's, the, end there's raise, two more pigs. Kind of end raise forerunners, which is the newest of the critter of pig family. And is actually a pig, Squeonk. I think. Yeah. yeah, previously we had a boar, a, a beast, and now we've had a boar. Wait, is it well, a, yeah. actually a pig? And many, many, many it's pigs. A, it's a boar. It's, it's a, a boar? It's also yeah. a boar. Yeah. Okay, yeah. A what does this one do? Uh, this one's same same mana cost as hoof, so five green, green, green. Vigilance Trample Haste, seven, seven. When it ETBs, other creatures you control get plus two, plus two, gain Vigilance and Trample. So the turn. safest of the pigs, the most conservative of the pigs. It's not all in. <laughs> it's a yeah. very conservative pig. All right, and and there's a fourth pig? It's like secret boss pig. All right, and, uh, and tell me about it. Oh, this is the uh, hidden unlock pig. Yeah, okay. this is uh, Akuma. Um, what? I, I call it Akuma Matata because it's the secret unlockable pig. I'm so that you have angry. To go, and what's its actual name? Uh, so and, Matt can look or it sorry, up. Ilharg the Raise Boar. Um, it's not technically a hoof. What right? do you? Since when do people play this in hoof? Since well, this card ben, was ben, released, Ben yeah. has a, a blood blood hoof deck. So well, it's because. like hoof. Hoof will be more or less red green for the longest time. It's been red green. There, yeah. you can build it with white, with black, with like blue now. Thanks, Oko. Is this, um, guy, <laughs> is this guy from Tuscany? Oh my god! But like this, having I, I mean, Jared Jer will cover this in the the like what makes this deck like a mid range deck as well. Yeah. But like having this extra card that. It's a little bit slower, but it's a massive pig that if you get to attack with it, you're winning the game, usually because mm-hmm. it puts in another pig <clears throat> or a similarly large animal that Do unfortunately is pig? not a pig. Hmm? Is this ramp pig? I like Akuma Matata. Now, not to toot my own horn, but I think it's a deep cut. Yes, yes, you think you're very clever, I no, guess. No, you know what? Sneak pig. And handsome, too. I like sneak, sneak pig. pig. Yep. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, welcome to a brand new segment I just made up on the spot. Pigs, um, pigs rated. <laughs> so we have four <laughs> contenders, and I'm wondering who we think is the penultimate pig. Vote now yeah. on your phone. This is Boar God. Not even a question. Yeah. Um, so Jer thinks first place for Boar God. Okay. Uh, Alex, who do you think <laughs> is your preferred pig? Mm. What's the the two drop that um, turns into a three three when it dies? Beautiful pig. Beautiful pig. Flint hoof boar. Wow, I wasn't expecting a a, <laughs> a write in vote. A write in vote from Alex <laughs> over is, here. This is uh, this is funny because I also had a write in vote. What? Of, uh, yeah, Zertos swine. Oh yeah, <laughs> another beautiful pig. You're gonna it's have to spell that one over there. What uh, is the Z H? I don't remember. You are. Z H R D A. Slow down, slow down. <laughs> I won't slow down for Zertos swine. It has one speed surge. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Zertos swine. Sui. Five out of five four. That's from uh, Gate, Gate Crash. Gate Crash has blood rush. Oh, oh right. Uh, one oh. red green. Discard it. Target ah. attacking creature gets plus five, plus four until end of turn. Well, I'm gonna vote my favorite pig to the OG Cradle Hoof itself. I think all the other boars are but, all the precious pigs are but a pale imitation to our original <laughs> Cradle Hoof. I thought you were gonna say like, my OG are Gothian swines. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no, no. Warthog. <laughs> no right-in vote from me over here. Hmm. This was a great segment. We should do a whole Thank episode you. on now, this. Now, let's go back to how is Hoof actually a mid-range deck? Because I've played against Hoof a lot, and I've definitely felt more so the combo side than the mid-range side. Most of the games end with them playing Hoof, and their board is already developed. They have, you know, eight million creatures in play, and then all of a sudden they've got like plus a million, plus a million in trample, and you just die instantly. Mm. Is this leaning further into the combo side than the mid-range side as far as these decks go? Because it feels like it playing against it, but I could have selective memory and hate there the deck. There's also just, it's very, this deck is very draw dependent because it doesn't play the high density of two, like selective tutors that other other decks do. Often the tutor targets for for Hoof is like, all right, do we have six mana, get Primeval Titan? Do we have eight mana, get Crater Hoof? That's most of the tutor choices. <laughs> like sometimes you're like, oh, I need to green sun to get to six mana. Then we can start making other choices. So you get like Rafaelis or Priest of Titania or whatever. Sure, Instead. but how many games are you winning not off the back of those tutor targets? Uh, quite a few, actually. Uh, especially, it depends what version you're playing, but lots of, lots of decks will win just like by like, going like, land mana dork, then land like I don't know if they're still playing mana crypt. I haven't played the deck since the the fast mana points change, but you, yeah, the points are all, you, the, you can do whatever you want yeah, with this. Deck. I'm sure mana crypt <laughs> is still good in the deck, but you can go like land mana crypt, Garrick, Garrick mm. wild speaker, <clears throat> and then you've cast a turn two Garrick wild speaker and have access to a bunch of mana still. I guess that I'm thinking about it. I've definitely played where they've gone, you know, turn four prime time. I'm like, okay, you know, swords are path your prime time. You're like, haha, well I went and got wolf run. And now I'm gonna dead. give I'm gonna give my mana dork like plus five plus zero oh, and trample every turn and that's a that's a pretty quick yeah, clock and I guess gonna... and I guess that that's a fair win in that <laughs> way. Speaking what? of fair, correct me if I'm wrong, but the deck does a reasonable impression of Elf Ball, doesn't it? Yeah, but Elf yeah. Ball has also felt like a, a combo deck as well. And it, and again, well, I just mean like Elf 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 Lord kill you. I, I think you... it it's at its most mid rangey in the in the red matchup. If you ask many burn pilots, I bet none of them will complain about the matches where they get hoofed because that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> They'll complain about the matchups where they curve Kitchen Finks into Eternal Witness to get their tutor back to get Thrag Tusk. Hmm. The, Yikes. Like, especially the mid-range side of Hoof 2 has come... Like, Hoof has evolved a lot for a deck that is so... Uh, well known for just being like cradle tap it kill you like <laughs> the the progression from like the first hoof tournament to this hoof tournament well, I mean the mean, first hoof tournament you're playing like 17 I, points yeah, yeah black you, you played Mox and you call it cradle to the grave and I'm glad that deck that name never caught on you don't like that film um but like 
especially in the past year, have you seen the, like, you, you could even say past couple of years, like, have you seen the green cards that they printed? <laughs> They're absurd. Yeah. You, we've gotten, like, especially the Planeswalkers. You're like, new Nissa, new Domri, new other Domri, <laughs> Ren and Six. Oko. You could play Oko. You could. Did you play Questing Beast as a no, mid-range card? No. You're, you're that's mid-range. That's not an, good enough. That's an aggro card. Okay. Mid-range well, your mid-range card. cards, like, the cards at four and three, three to five. The cards at three to five. Oh, also the Vivian. And the other Vivian, <laughs> and maybe and the third Vivian. The other Vivian. <laughs> yeah, like the deck went from like two to three planeswalkers to six planeswalkers, and people were like, "Wow, that's a lot of planeswalkers!" And, and now like, you could be at twelve. Yep. Um, but like, you want your mid range cards to help you survive and almost kind of try to attrition your opponent out because, like, they don't. Again, they don't want to use their resources on your like kitchen finks, and then your recurred kitchen finks and then you're witnessed kitchen finks that sucks you're, you're yeah. just sitting there being like Ugh. but like if they they have to and mm. when they do then that means your planeswalkers are going uh unnoticed or you're slowly hitting your land drops when and one of the reasons that the hybrid combo decks are so successful and the ones that are the most successful are the ones that have the best mid-range fair plans is that eventually these decks have to answer your mid-range fair plans, and that's when you're able to pivot. Sure. And say they tap out Tarathiu, then you tap you. You've been able to attrition them. You tap your six lands that you've just got to play. Put in Garrett Collar of Beasts <laughs> minus Garrett Collar of Beasts. Put in your Primeval Titan, and they're like, "Didn't I just wrath you? Now you have two six <laughs> mana permanents, and you're threatening a twenty twenty. Like, uh, any final thoughts on Hoof before we move on to our next deck? It. Is so, it's so good? Yeah, we talked about the vulnerabilities in Sandy B as our closing remark. Like, what? Why? Why not? I mean, Hoof is really good. It ain't easy being green. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, forked bolt. Yeah, pyroclasm. Uh, that that used to be my secret tech to beat Hoof. And Hoof heavy meta, bring your pyroclasm. Jared's saying like not well, even. Pyroclasm's <clears throat> not gonna cla- like if including a clasm in your deck means that you're gonna fight people where clasm doesn't do anything, in- exactly. and it's too expensive. I'm, all right, that's fair. At least fork bolt goes to like, the dome or something like that. Well, it's just more applicable. It also hits planeswalkers now mm. because like the the strength that Hoof has in these matches is again now especially because you can just resolve these planeswalkers and so have if you class them their board and they have walkers they're just like oh <laughs> um but like fork bolt you can at least like kill a creature sure. and kill your walker sure sure yeah, sure the, um, the, the most frustrating thing hoof can do is when they they go like turn one you're looking at your hand of burn spells you're like yes yes yeah. yes play your mana dork and then like utopia sprawl and you're like no <laughs> <laughs> and, and flyers, Fly, flyers are huge. Like to the point where, in it, when I was only like playing hoof or really jamming it, I was like, oh, cloud thresher, maybe silk clash spider. Like, what do we? What, I've played how, silk how, like, what do we do? Because like that's how the blue decks will kill you, or that's how the the mid range decks. Like, They'll oh. just be like, all right, vanillian clique. Let's look at your hand. Oh, it's a bunch of poopy doopy, and then a natural hoarder. Well, that's going on the bottom, and then it just like you'll never be able to kill it because it's just like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> up in the air. And they're just gonna remand you into the dirt. <clears throat> yeah. Oh. All right, let's move on to the next list I want to talk about today, which is Kiki Pod, and I want to throw to Alex. Alex. I just made two words there that don't make a lot of sense by themselves. What is a Kiki Pod? Uh, well, you sort of blink and you die. <laughs> kiki Pod is uh, no, it, it's it, tradi- does, it doesn't play many blink spells actually. <laughs> well, with the Fellow Dark, it it traditionally play it's um, Teamer, right? Yeah, Rug. Sometimes four R- color. Rug based. Sometimes it's just, four color. Right? Yeah, it, so, it sometimes adds white. Mm. Yes. Um, so it's primarily based around. Uh, okay, so Kiki. Mm-hmm. Kiki Jiki, Mirror Breaker, and its impressions, which, well, it's basically just. Um, uh, Deceiver, Exarc, Pester, Might are the classic ones. No, and I, Splinter I was thinking, Twin. Yeah, Splinter Twin, that's the one. So it plays those, um, I have this and this and play and kill you to death. Uh, it also plays um, Pod, Birthing Pod, which is really stupid. Yeah, the fair card. No, it isn't. There's a reason it's it's many points. Let me let, let's go through a uh, birthing pod real quick. What? Three and a green Phyrexian mana, which means it can be paid with a green or two life. Um, artifact, 
one and a green Phyrexian, tap, sacrifice a creature, search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to one, plus the sacrifice creature's converted mana cost, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Activate this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery. Thank goodness. This art is underrated. It's pretty cool. It's very Phyrexian. It's so, very, very Phyrexian. It's very Phyrexian. I'm trying to think what the, what the chain Blah. is, because I, I always forget. Like, you go... Like, two drop kills them, right? Yeah. Uh, you can kill with a one now. Yeah. If you have a pod and a one drop. And a corridor monitor. Yeah. All right, let's give an example. How does that work? So let's say I have a birthing pod. Yeah. And I have a one drop mana elf that I've used to play this birthing pod. So it's already tapped. Uh, it doesn't even no, have to no, be no, untapped you need to kill some them? Mana. Okay. You need some mana. Basically, if you have pod and a one drop and, and how much mana... mana well, what does what does mana mean in this context? It depends five? on where you start. Five, four, three. Like it, it depends. Like the thing is that not all the time are you just going to be like, well, I have the Wingus and Dingus in play. <laughs> time to Dingus. time to kill them because you're the mid range deck. You'll have like an Elvish Visionary or something to make it easier. Sure. But basically, up the chain of Corridor Monitor, every card I'm going to talk about here untaps a permanent or blinks a permanent, thus making it untapped or returning it to battlefield to use its untap ability. Corridor monitor untaps the birthing pod. So it's a uh -oh. two mana, one four for one and a blue. When it enters the battlefield, untap target artifact or creature. And then corridor. So one drop turns into this. And then corridor monitor dies yeah. and finds, say, a deceiver exarch. All right, deceiver exarch, one four when it enters the battlefield. Deceiver exarch untaps it as well. Oh, I, you're noticing a trend. Interesting. What are the uh, chances? And then let's say we get a Felidar guardian. So which this doesn't one doesn't untap. untap. No. No. But what it does is it blinks. The pod. So Felidar Guardian. Any permanent you control. Uh, popular from copycat decks that were in standard in Scourge the Kalidar Pioneer. Uh, yeah. Okay, I get it. So also you're just going to keep going until you get like a five and it's pretty big, right? Uh, well, so you pod this cat uh, and then let's say you get a Karmic Guide. What's Karmic Guide do? Karmic Guide is a five drop, two, two, flying pro black angel. With echo. <laughs> with echo in white. That when it ETBs, you reanimate a card. And well, we talked about this in uh, in Sandy, Sandy B as yeah. well, yeah. So you reanimate this Felidar Guardian, which untaps this pod. Mm -hmm. And then you pod this Felidar Guardian into a Kiki-Jiki, which we talked about before, the yeah. Handsome Goblin. Yeah. Uh, and then you Kiki-Jiki your Karmic Guide, which brings back Felidar Guardian. Or which, Corridor Monitor, or, or, or Deceiver or, Exarch. <laughs> or any of the things that you've thrown into the kiln to create the beautiful vase that is your opponent's death. So you untap you. pod, you have a, you, uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a lot of this. It's a lot of this. Activate, play this, uh, untap this. <laughs> Did you uh, just clap? Pod. No, I mean, you <laughs> clap at the end, I'm shuffling. And then you, uh, you're just, it's a lot of picking up your deck, finding this, putting that in the graveyard, so, finding this, untapping and. Activating this on a one drop, you have a, a, a chain of creatures that are like, not terrible on their own. They're pretty bad. They're pretty bad, but... <laughs> a lot yeah. of one-fours. Some of them are They're okay. all one-fours. But, like... You, you, you have an arrangement where you can continually untap and reactivate Birthing Pod until you get a Kiki kill. Yeah. Hence, Kiki Pod. Yes. Even better with Vanifar, because you need neither mana nor life. Can you talk yes. about what Vanifar oh, is? Oh, right! Vanifar is two blue-green... For a two-four legendary merfolk, uh, elf ooze. Elf elf ooze. I believe it's, it's not even elf a merfolk. Ooze. Yeah. Oh, she's slimy. You're right. She is an elf. Um, also an ooze. And she has the same text as as birthing ooze. pod, she except without the activation cost. I'm pretty sure it's an prime, ooze because it's not. Prime speaker Vanifar. Yeah, she, sorry. Yeah, prime prime speaker it's Vanifar. It's just a tap ability. Uh, yeah, she just taps. <laughs> It's great. And it, it's it's the same text except you cut off the one in green Phyrexian and the. Yeah. No, that's Elf it. And it's a 2-4. Elf Ooze Wizard. We I all missed Wizard. We type. all missed Wizard. Because remember, there was an Ooze in, <gasps> in Sand of this part that right, biogenic, biogenic Ooze out. that worked well with it. All right, what are we the hearing? Vidalcan Aether Mage. <laughs> I'm, you're going to have to tell me what Vidalcan Aether Mage <laughs> Wait does. Wait a minute. Oh, you're not familiar with popular magic card and uh, keyword wizard cycling? <laughs> I saw this card on Tuesday played... On a, in a table next to me. Hold on. It's so cool. Oh, OG oh, Future Sight. All right, somebody tell me what this card does. One in a blue for a one-two <laughs> with flash. When it ETBs, 
You may return target sliver to its owner's hand. <laughs> Think of the applications. I, mm. <laughs> or you can pay three and pitch it into the ether to search your library and the wizard acquire cycling? any wizard. Yep. It curves perfectly into Prime Speaker Vanifar. The, the worst part about this returning a sliver is that <laughs> now, like, like you could always return a mutavolt. Yeah. Right? Sure. But the only sliver that has really seen consistent play, and none, it doesn't see play anymore because of Rex Age and Knight of Autumn. Harmonic, harmonic sliver, sliver, which yep. you don't want to give them back. Which it is just like, oh, I guess. <laughs> well, you could, you're, you're in a toolbox creature deck, so you could play Harmonic Sliver to rebuy the Harmonics. Mm. <laughs> now, the issue the issue with Harmonic Sliver in Pod is it doesn't say May. <laughs> and nothing feels worse than playing Harmonic Sliver and blowing up your own stuff, and I know this because it's happened to me. Thank God nobody's played this card since 2012. <laughs> yeah, Rec Reclamation Sage came out, and I was like, but what if I just want to play my Harmonic Sliver, uh, which I have a foil version of? just play of. Bosley if you want one. Like... <laughs> It, 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 we don't need to. I I miss on. Harmonic Sliver. Cause I like Pride Mage. Yeah. Oh, because I like Pride Mage. So good. I, mean, I used to try and just be stubborn and play Harmonic Sliver until I was forced <clears> to <throat> blow up my own stuff, and it feels <laughs> so <laughs> bad. You're like, I have a GTA in play, and it's an empty board, and I can't play my own Sliver. Oh, God. <laughs> so I want to tell you, <clears throat> I've played against this deck, and there was a situation that I only have dim memory of because I died really, really badly. I had two instant speed removal spells mm -hmm. and I could not figure out how to prevent my opponent Oh, from when the timing me. is, right? Well, the thing is with this deck, it's akin to Sandy B, is if you have the life and mana, you can essentially, the the world's your oyster. World's your you, onion. you can basically do whatever you want. But yeah, you'd, you'd think having two instant speed, like kill anything spells, would be enough to disrupt this combo in the middle. It wasn't. I under, well, I understand a weird point because when you when you sacrifice the creature, it's part of the cost. You can't respond and kill the creature before it's sacrificed. Then the ability resolves. The new creature is put on the board, and then the active player has priority again. But you can respond to the untapping of the pod. Yeah. Yes, that's that's the part you have the to go. The timing is really really. Is but the it, triggered ability it, there. It depends what else they have in play. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> one one thing about the pod deck too that provides more flexibility is that. It's kind of a hybrid between two combos because a lot of the, a lot of the pod uh, spreads and the best pod spread, admittedly, involves time walk, um, which because yep. of cards like Eternal Witness and cards like Spellseeker and you put a Splinter Twin on your Eternal Witness to repeatedly get back time walk or just using time walk so that like you're like, well, I'll attack you with a bunch of two twos. I'll take it with a bunch turn. of tutus and take an extra turn so I can kill you with these I was going to ask that... where the mid-range part is, because, again, this seems like a super scary combo deck. You play there was Pot a, Out. There was a local player who really liked Time Walk just because he said that it, you needed that little extra bit of time the, to, uh, to finish the combo. Time Walk kind of encapsulates how I've always felt with Kiki with in, in playing this deck, um, is that... A lot, and, and Sandy B's in a similar spot too, where you will, you don't always turbo Kiki them. Hmm. Like, on it, more often than not, you mid range them out. It's the threat of the combo kill that makes this deck so devastating. Mm. And sometimes you will, I, I, I like to just see it as like, I'll attack, I'll attack, I'll attack, and I'll do all these things until they have to dedicate to the board. They realize that they can't win with their spells. Going one for one doesn't work against my renegade ralliers and whatnot. So they have to fight the board. And when they dedicate enough to the board, all Kiki Jiki says is like, hey, uh, I'm a falter now. Your creatures can't block. It's basically just saying like, I'm gonna make a couple of extra bodies because they'll be at like five. So you just need to make like three extra fairy rogues or whatever it is you're copying just to get around their blockers. Hmm. And, and like, it's like, oh, I got combo killed. It's like, okay, but like, somebody could have <laughs> kicked a burst lightning and you would die. <laughs> like, but it's that little extra punch because you, you're playing like arguably dinkier things on the lower curve than Sandy. Cause like- well, you're playing all these one fours. Like yeah. every card we talked about in this case is pretty bad by itself. Like, like the mid range plan of Sandy B is like, Knight of the Reliquary, Anafenza, Lockstone Smiter. Like, it's a bunch of three mana four fours all hanging out. Be like, hey, hey, hey did you see the game last night? <laughs> yeah, um, and then Pod, it's like, oh dear, I'm a three mana one one. 
<laughs> it'll find another three mana one one and like that part but that's more terrifying than sure. big donkey yeah. elephant with a hammer and well, the like, reason oh, why oh. is just like mm, oh dear it seems peace was never an option <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I all right, uh, we are running out of time. There are two other decks I wanted to talk about really quickly, and I'll just give them honorable mentions right now, which are Grixis Time Vault and Scape Shift, decks that we've talked about a lot before, but I think also fit in the range of hybrid combo decks. And we will make sure to include deck lists about everything we've talked about today. One very short comment on those decks in particular yeah. too, and why we mostly focused on decks that have Llanowar Elves in them and creature ones is because it's so much easier for a creature deck to pivot to a combo kill because creatures attack and do damage. Right. So if you include them in your deck, you will have inevitability by turning your creature sideways and doing damage. If you're a ramp deck or a control deck that has the combo option, like sure, you can kill people with Snapcaster Mage and whatnot, but it's you don't have 40 cards in your deck that just have a game mechanic of tapping them to do damage. <laughs> Gets a little bit trickier there. Mm -hmm. All right, let us move on to our closing segment, Powerful Magic. Bup, bup, bup. And up to date, Wheeler. Okay. Regale us with a tale of magic. So uh, I was tasked with building a deck that was seemingly supposed to be a meme deck a couple of months ago uh, that was a Stifle Knot deck oh, that used yeah. Phyrexian <laughs> Dreadnought uh, and Stifle <clears throat> effects. Um, Phyrexian Dreadnought's the big one, so I'll, I'll cover this. Because the Stifles, there's a bunch of ways yeah. that effectively deal with triggered abilities that counter them or make them not happen. Well, because the, the, the quintessence of the deck is like you pay way too little mana for a giant creature that has some horrendous drawback, and then you're like, I won't pay that drawback. Right, so there are two cards I'm gonna talk about. Phyrexian Dreadnought's <clears throat> the big one, because it's a one mana 12-12 trample. <laughs> Seems great. Uh, but it says when it ETBs, you sacrifice any number of creatures with total power 12 or more, or bury or, or sacrifice. Well, that, that seems bad. Yeah, so the stifles <laughs> help. You play this, you stifle that ability. And then what is a stifle effect? Uh, it counter, it's a spell that will counter a triggered or activated ability. All right. Triggered ability is the most important one, though. Um, and so, but that's a two card, like, that's not great. Like, we have Path to Exile, Sword to Plowshares, yeah. Fatal You've push. invested two cards into one card yeah. that can be removed so from one card. So this was shockingly good, though. Huh. I killed people, like, dead left and right with this deck. Um, and mostly because of a card called Illusionary Mask, which I'm going oh, to speed no. run through this card because it's a little long. It has long. a lot of words. Yeah, but I have practiced this. So <laughs> it's a two mana artifact that has pay X. Uh, you may put a creature card with converted mana and cost X or less from your hand onto the battlefield as a, oh, a zero one. No, um, sorry, this is, the, the, there's a, a version of this card. The Oracle text on this card is wildly different, but it basically says you put a creature card in face down, you have to pay X, which is equal to or less than the converted mana cost of the card you're putting face down. Okay. And then if that card were to take damage, deal damage, or be flipped up by an effect, it is flipped up, basically. So it kind of lets you morph this card that will only unmorph if these certain quali uh, qualifications are met. Now that's very interesting because there's hidden information in the Lucifer Mask but most of the time when something asks you to for tutor for something that has a condition, you have to reveal, have to it. reveal it. So how do you get to just trust me on the fact that this 12-12 only costs one mana? Yeah, it's it's a bit of a mess. So um, <laughs> what, what incentive do you have for not paying less than what the card is worth? I mean, there's then none. You're, then you're it's just the for card cheating. from ABU, basically. Oh, um, so you so can... Ah. I was killing people... Uh, dead with this deck and this <laughs> card a lot. Um, and it, uh, I had somebody, uh, I, I killed people dead with this deck so much that somebody thought it would be neat to build this deck themselves and play it. And in the first time that they played the deck, uh, they illusionary masked out this Dreadnought or supposedly this Dreadnought who knew what it was. Um, and then I happened to gain control of this creature. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, so they, no. they went through the steps. Of, it was kind of a slog fest because this deck plays a lot of uh, counter magic and disruption because you're trying to force through something that you have no business doing in this format. And so <laughs> it was kind of this back and forth. And then finally they're like, illusionary mask, my creature, go. Mm. And I was like, mm, that sounds good. I th I'll gain control of it. I believe it was agent of treachery. 
but I could be wrong. The best um, pressure on playing from the previous it, episode. It, it's kind of like a funny like gain control, and they're like, oh no. <laughs> and it's just like <laughs> not like oh, this. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, that's the Judge Judy meme of like you look up the Okay. Like, oh, oh no. And so getting to kill them with their own dreadnought. Uh, felt pretty good. I, it felt like a thing that after memeing people with it, or think it was a meme, turns out it's real, inspires people to play it, they play it, and then they get immediately donked by the <laughs> last best card you're not playing. Wah, Amazing. Wah. Yeah. All right, everybody. Well, that is going to be it for today's episode. Thank you very much for tuning in. Want to remind you that this episode is brought to you by you with your support at the Patreon over at patreon.com slash run. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. That's kept in. <laughs> <laughs>